regardless, is one of the country's leading trial attorneys, um, specializing in one of his specialties in First Amendment law and a civil rights attorney. Uh, he is also a member of the Cuban Five trial team. Mr. Garbus. Thank you. Danny said it all. <laughs> I'll try and follow. America is one of the leaders with hold of the free world, and amongst other things, the imposition of solitary confinement. And that is something that Gerardo has had extraordinarily long periods of time. Solitary confinement is unlike anything anyone has experienced. Countries that have reputations for being dictatorial and totalitarian do not use solitary confinement the way America does. And the imposition of that on Gerardo and his refusal to break under it is an extraordinary story. What I'm now going to talk to you about, the legal aspect, there's a document outside that we're going to file this Friday. If you pick it up outside, you'll be seeing it before the government sees it. And as I tell you the story, no matter how skeptical you are of the American government, and no matter how you feel, and you're taught certain things in law school, about the relationship between politics and the effect of politics on law, you will find it hard to believe what happened in Cuba, pardon me, what happened in Miami in this particular case. What happened in this particular case is unprecedented and it's nearly incomprehensible. And to understand it, you have to be aware of the politics of Miami. The politics of Miami from 1996 to 2001. Both Democrats and Republicans had a commitment for this prosecution. The prosecution starts under Clinton, it ends under Bush, and the success of the prosecution directly relates to who gets a large portion of the Cuban vote in Miami. So the prosecution, and it's a complicated story, goes ahead in order to get the support of either political party, both political parties, by getting a successful conviction. Now I'll just give you the top line of what happened. Those of you who are law students or lawyers will think about all the cases you have seen and all the claims of governmental injustice, and you will not find another case in the United States that bears any relation to what happened down in Miami. What the American government did from 1996 to 2001 was spend ten, tens of millions of dollars in order to persuade and intimidate the jury to convict these defendants. Outside, you have a document which pulls together about nine months of extensive research, as well as years of work before by Mara, by Gloria, and the other people on the committee, to document exactly what the government has done, where the government has spent money, and why the government spent this money, and through what conduits they spent the money. What happened in short was these tens of millions of dollars were used to pay probably hundreds of journalists, we've uncovered 17 years far, who were writing both for the Miami Herald and other newspapers, who were on television and who were on talk radio. These people were receiving money. One journalist, for example, received $260,000. These are very large sums of money. A radio station received $460,000. And as I said, the money's are disguised. They go to people who write for newspapers, or speak on TV, or speak on radio. And the listeners, the American audience, the Miami one, doesn't know that that person is being paid by American dollars, by the same people who are prosecuting these defendants, in order to get a conviction. And these stories and the articles that came out and the broadcast that came out are going to be presented to the court for the first time in the next few months after this particular document is filed. Again, you're used to small acts of government misdeeds. You're used to, in cases, 
You're used to a witness being beaten up. You're used to coerced testimony. You're used to law. You're used to lost documents. This goes far beyond that. This goes with respect to hundreds of people, a lot of former CIA people, a lot of Bay Pigs people who were involved in this massive campaign to persuade and intimidate the, the jury. What we have is we have collected the articles that were written by the people that we know were paid by the government. And we are in the process of submitting all of them to the court. For example, the Miami Herald, 35% of the articles written by the Miami Herald from 1996 to 2001 are written by people who receive government monies, who don't disclose the fact that they're writing, that they receive money from the government, and they're writing about the very prosecution. Sometimes they're giving out information in the press that the judge specifically said should not be released to the press. Sometimes they're writing about stories that are such fantasy that only the American government or the CIA that was involved in this case would believe. For example, some of the articles talk about these five defendants, Herarda, as being an advanced group of Cubans who are preparing uh, southern Miami for potential Castro invasion when Castro would have difficulties in Cuba and he was going to come over here in order to resurrect the Cuban government and also to establish a foothold in Miami. And you will find this in dozens and dozens of articles. The articles tie together Stalin, Hitler, Castro. It's the worst kind of political propaganda that has been done. You had also Danny mentioned Jose Marti. You have Radio TV Marti. Radio TV Marti is $37 million a year in 1996-1997, in that period of time. And those monies went into a radio and TV operation that ostensibly was going to reach into Cuba. Cuba jammed it. And the Congress knows that Cuba jammed it. Everybody knows that Cuba jammed it. And instead, all those assets were turned on to the southern uh, into Miami and to the listeners in Miami. What you had, and as lawyers you'll appreciate this, what you had then are government monies that are supposed to be, and it's permissible, to distribute propaganda overseas. The voice of America can say anything at once about Soviet Union or about any potential enemies. But the law prohibits propaganda monies from being used to persuade the American public about anything in particular. You cannot use propaganda monies to talk to an American audience. You can't persuade an American audience under the law about, now the, the lines here are fairly clear. You cannot do it. It's not arguable, it's not questionable. It's a violation of law. <coughs> what the American government did with Radio TV Marti, which was receiving $37 million a year, was to take those broadcasts, the radio broadcasts, and also the TV broadcasts, and to pound away every single day with dozens of stories about the guilt of these defendants. The jurors' lives were made horrendous. The penalty that was going to be imposed on the jurors, they understood, because they were all identified in the press. You didn't have a sequestered jury. You had a jury where everybody in the community knew who they were. The jurors knew that if they had acquitted these particular defendants or hung the jury, that they would then be ostracized in their community. Gloria mentioned the Miami Herald article in September of 2006, where journalists in Miami Herald discovered for the first time that government monies were being used in this particular case to convict the defendants. That journalist, Oscar Corral, prior to the time, after he started the research, prior to the time that he reported it, was in a way rescued by the Miami Herald. They moved him and his family and made sure that the Cuban community could not get at him. After the article was printed, there were death threats and all kinds of allegations, and he was put away and hidden away. What would have happened to the jurors, and they knew it, had they voted for an acquittal, or had they questioned the government's case, would have been far greater than that. So the power of the Cuban community, of the right-wing Cuban community, the amount of money that was going into the Cuban community in 1996 went far beyond Radio Marti. What happened, by the way, is Radio Marti basically had been, up until 1996, based in Washington. 
As a result of this case, in early 1996, Radio Marti moves to Miami. It, there is no longer any government coverage of what they're doing, no, no, no longer any government responsibility, basically. It falls into the hands of the right-wing Cubans. And they use Radio Marti. This is the central political issue going on within Miami at that particular time. To put it all in legal terms, because all of you are very sophisticated lawyers, the first, I'll, I'll just read a bit to you, of the motion to amend that's going to be filed on Friday. Now, having practiced law for a good period of time throughout the United States in a variety of political cases, I can tell you that if you had a case like this with these facts, the case would be tossed in a second. And it wouldn't matter whether the defendant's been 14 years, 20 years, or no time. The case would get tossed like that. But this is my end. Under the law, you have to go back before the judge who tried the case originally. And that judge has a commitment to conviction. This case is one of the stars in her resume that she managed to secure a conviction which then withstood an appeal. So the difficulty of dealing with this judge on that issue was significant. <clears throat> Whether ultimately one makes a motion to recuse it, to get away from the judge, is yet to be seen. But these are the allegations. You're going to have some of the background for it. Had I given you these allegations at the very beginning without any background, it would have seemed like fantasy. And for those of you who have read cases and have read the law, you know now you will not see any other case in American history in any way like this. So that the first article in, in this amendment, and there were 30, but I'll only read the first five or 60. It's that the government secretly and illegally paid many, paid hundreds of journalists to publish propaganda through writing speeches and radio and television broadcasts that violated the integrity of the trial and the Constitution of the United States in an attempt to persuade the jury to wrongfully convict Mouvan in her order. And the jury, as a result of the government's wrongful actions, did wrongfully convict them. The people started to go, the journalists, in 1996 to the government for money. And what the government saw is that the work that the journalists were doing to create a feeling of persuasion and intimidation against these jurors was remarkably successful. So you had more and more money coming in 1996, 1997, 1998. The total amount of money that was poured into the case, we don't know. And we have told the judge, we don't know whether there are 100 journalists, 200 journalists. We know there were tens of millions of dollars. We don't know how much more went in, and we don't know for what, how much of a longer period it went in. The next allegation talks about the particular governmental agencies that were involved in this horrific legal prosecution. A government agency, the Office of Cuban Broadcasting and Radio TV Marti. Jose Marti's name meant something a while back, the total subversion of that name. <coughs> Uh, for this radio program, or for this station, uh, to be used against the Cuban people. So Radio Marti deliberately hired and paid secret propagandists. The money for the people in the Miami Herald, or for the CBS, or for NBC, the people who are talking, comes through Radio Marti that we know about. How much comes from entities like the National Endowment for Democracy, we don't know. The other thing is, the people who were hired by the government, to write these articles, whether they be at the Miami Herald or not, all had a consistent political background. Many of them were Bay of Pigs veterans. Many of them had been jailed in Cuba for anti-government activities. Many had been jailed in the United States for violence against the Miami Cuban community. Many had very deep CIA connections. None of this is arguable. All of this is set forth in specifics. When we got into the case with Mara, Gloria, other people started to look, they went through databases. These databases are often contradictory, and these databases often hide far more than they disclose. So you would see, according to a database, that a particular journalist got $5,000. Then you see another database where he got $2,000. If you, and then you look at various databases, you have to go to database after database, and then often you would not find anything. 
you will learn, for example, through somehow that a man got $100,000, someone called Patterson, but then you didn't see anything that he did. Now, people would get $27,000 for uh, one week's work. So it's highly likely that in addition to doing the writing, they did other things. The usual CIA dirty tricks involved. Those allegations are in the case. I would ask you to take a look at the document because to tell, make the overall allegation seems like pure fantasy, but it's all documented. Thank you.